Hey survivalists, Malcolm here with Survival Know How, and before me we have the December 2016 Apocalypse Box. Let's get to it. All right, so let's jump right into it. I'm always very excited about these Apocalypse Boxes. They usually have a lot of fun projects and hands-on activities they can do. Like I'm always saying, it's a uh, pocket box is sort of like a mail order uh, Boy Scout experience in a box, right? For grown-ups. It's something along those lines. But these things are a lot of fun and they usually have a lot of learning uh, experiences built into them, which is pretty unique. All right, the pocket box is the uh, Tega, Taigi, Tiga, Tiaga. Taiga? T-A-I-G-A. Taiga. All right. Uh, this month's theme, if you don't already know, the Sapaka Box has, is themed after one of my favorite documentaries titled Happy People, A Year in the Taiga. If you haven't seen it yet, please watch it at myapocabox.com slash Taiga. All right, so Creek Stewart, he likes uh, this documentary, I guess, called Taiga, or Happy People. I'll have to look that up. This is the village of Bachtia in Siberia. The endless wilderness that surrounds this place is known as the Taiga. This colossal landmass is one and a half times the size of the United States. Okay, so the first item is the Russian style trapper axe. Very nice. Okay, let's see. Oh, look at this. Look at this. You know, we haven't seen too many knives and blades in the Apaka boxes, and the few that we have had, uh, I wasn't all that impressed with. But this seems like a pretty solid uh, little hatchet right here. Okay, so they're saying this is a Russian style trapper axe. Okay, got a solid enough wood handle. Okay, look at that. That looks like that'll get the job done. One aspect of the documentary, Happy People, A Year in the Russian Taiga, I couldn't help but notice was how the trappers depended on their small Russian wooden axes. It is a remarkable tool that is always at their waist and I notice they use it even more than their knife. So a hatchet is a very useful tool to have out in the wilderness. Um, even though you can use a nice full tang survival knife to even chop down a tree with and baton sticks, you know, that's not really what they're designed for. That's what this is really designed for. And it can just be a lot more efficient. Um, a lot, you can be a lot more productive by using a hatchet like this to chop trees down or um, split firewood and whatnot. You know, every every tool's got a job and that's, that's what the... Uh, hatchet is really for not really what a survival knife is designed to do but it, you can use it for that it's not really what it's ultimately designed for so pretty cool uh it seems like a pretty good quality here uh, i'm pretty happy with that this is probably one of the nicer blades that we've seen in the apaka boxes so far so pretty much in this letter creek is saying that in this um documentary about these russian people uh, they are very dependent on a Russian style hatchet just like this and he went out to try to find a hatchet that is very similar to the style that they have in that movie Happy People a year in the Taiga. So very, I'm definitely intrigued now. I'm definitely going to have to go and watch this movie. But uh, cool man, this is probably one of my favorite blades that we've gotten in a pocket box. Yeah, we don't get many, but uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to have fun breaking this guy in. All right, so moving along, the next item in the box is the Virgin Wool Watch Cap. All right, everybody needs a good uh, wool beanie like this. So what do they got to say about this? Uh, extreme cold Siberian trapping weather calls for a hat material that has stood the test of time. This 100% Virgin Wool Watch Cap is made in the USA and designed to combat the toughest conditions Mother Nature can throw at you, even the Siberian taiga. All right, so wool, you know, uh, wool is a great material, all right? They've been using wool caps for, I don't know, a long ass time. 
your parents and your grandparents probably wore wool caps just like this. Uh, wool is definitely a very warm material. Um, you know, I just got a wool blanket in the uh, battle box, most recent battle box. And so that's actually 70% wool, 30% synthetic. To get a full wool blanket, 100% wool, uh, they're over $100, right? $150, $200 sometimes for a 100% wool blanket. So wool's a pretty pretty expensive material, but it's uh, it's just great at keeping you warm. I mean, there's nothing like it. Um, so this is 100%, right? No no synthetics in there, and you know, it's since it's so much smaller, a little bit thinner, it's uh, just easier to get 100% wool watch caps like this. Uh, made by the Department of Defense Specifications. Okay. So this is probably made after um, the Navy. The Navy wears wool beanies or watch caps like, like this. So the sticker says, made to the Department of Defense specifications. So they're probably mimicking the style of watch caps that the Navy guys wear. All right, so next up we have a metal enamel coffee mug. So that's this guy right here. Um, this is probably tin or aluminum. You know, it's very lightweight. This is, again, just a very classic old style coffee mug. Uh, when your grandparents went camping, when your parents went camping, you know, they probably had a, a, a camping cookware set just like this. Nowadays you have like, you know, like collapsible mugs and all kinds of fancy stuff. You know, this is just keeping it old school, very uh, classic, just a simple coffee mug. And on here it has Creek's little saying that it's not if, but when. So, okay, cool, man, I'm cool with that. Nice little classic, um, a coffee mug. Okay, and then we have a tree line coffee. So where do we got that? Tree line coffee. Here you go. That's this guy. Okay, cool. So this is, uh, it looks like it actually has a pouch in there. All right, what the hell? I'll open it up. Let's see what we actually get with this. Because it looks like it's everything that you need to make a coffee. Pot of coffee. Okay, yeah, check that out. So it has these guys here. So you can actually, like, steep the coffee a uh, bag inside the boiling water to actually brew a single cup of coffee. Very cool, you know, that's always a little bit of a challenge when you're out in the wild uh, and you're out camping, you know, how do you actually brew a cup of coffee? Uh, you need a percolator or you need some kind of fancy tools. So this is kind of uh, solves that problem. This is a single serve coffee packet of coffee grinds there. So that's a pretty uh, interesting little design there. So this is Treeline Coffee Roaster if you're interested in this. Smells great, actually. Cool, man. I, I like that. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll do this uh, later on today. I'll make a nice cup of coffee. Okay, next up we have uh, repair needles. Repair needles. Okay, that's this right here. So if you have a bug out bag, right, you probably have a, a set of needles and threads in there, right? A sewing kit in your bung out bag is it's very important. Uh, a lot of people don't think about this, but so everybody knows that shelter uh, is oftentimes your top priority. Your clothing is your first line of shelter, okay? Your, your jacket, your pants, your, your shirt, all of that, your socks, your shoes, all that, that's your first line of protection from the wilderness. That is your shelter. So if you have a tear in your pants, for example, and you don't have something to fix that tear in your pants, Man, like it's you're screwed. Can you imagine being out uh, in you know um, snowy weather and you have a giant hole in your pants? Like how terrible that would be. Uh, so a lot of people might scoff at having a sewing kit and sewing needles in your camping bag or in your bug out bag or wherever. But it, it's pretty important, man. It's a pretty important thing to have. And you know something like this is so lightweight. They're so cheap. It's so small. You can just stick it in there and never even know it's in there again until you actually need it. So I guess he's recommending this this brand of household repair needle set. So it's got some really big needles here. So a couple smaller ones, a couple really big ones, a couple other tools. I don't even, I don't even know what they are, but yeah, I'm I'm all about this. If you don't have something like this in your camping bag or your bug out bag or your bug out vehicle or whatever, uh, yeah, I highly recommend that you get yourself a needle set like this. All right, so next up we have the minimalist two foot by six foot survival gill net. Okay, now we're talking here. So this is pretty much a, a net for catching fish, right? But this is the kind that you string up and you just let it be. And the fish, you wait, you come back the next day and see if any fish have swam into it. So 
See, look at that. This is a perfect addition to a bug out bag. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. You find a stream or you find some flowing water and you stick this up in there and you just, that's it, man. That's all the work you do. You come back the next day or a few hours and you see if you got anything that have swam into that. If you guys are watching Alone on History Channel, I think they're on season three now, but this, something similar to this is like one of the top items that those guys bring with them. And they set it up in a stream and they come back and a lot of them, they're, they're producing a lot of fish from this and it's minimal effort. Um, I mean, just like, look how small and compact this can get. And just imagine, you know, if you have the right spot and you get a little lucky, you know, you can have a consistent source of protein uh, by something this small and this lightweight, which is very cool, man. Uh, that is a great product. And you know what? I actually don't have this in my bug out bag. So this is going in my bug out bag. Uh, I'll have to, I don't know, see if I can make it a little bit smaller, get some more rubber bands on there keep it a little more compact, but I mean, this this weighs ounces. This is nothing. So cool product. I fully endorse that. Great pick, Creek. Okay, I am very excited about this. So not only did he give you a gill net, he's also giving you the equipment to make your own gill net. All right, so that's what I like about these boxes. They don't just give you gear. They teach you something. They teach you these valuable lessons. So they're giving you a plastic needle like this, and some cotton uh, net webbing, weaving twine right here. And I, there's a video that goes along with this box you can watch online and he teaches you how to make your own net. That is very, very valuable. Um, yeah, man, that's, that's incredibly valuable. Uh, I, I like that because you can make nets, you can make uh, all kinds of nets and stuff. You know, if you get something thick enough, you can even make um, hammocks out of this, make sleeping shelters. You can make bags, uh, you know. So having that skill of knowing how to make your own net, especially from natural cordage when you're out in the wild or from stuff that you can scavenge, it's super valuable, man. So very cool. Uh, I'm definitely gonna watch that video and try to make my own. And they also kind of give you a, a template so that you can carve something like this yourself out of wood or you know some other type of material and make your own uh, net weaving needle like this, which is really neat in case this one ever breaks, you know? I mean, how valuable would that be, man, to know how to make your own net weaving needle when you're out in the wild like that? All right, so next up, we get the pocket field guide for the Siberian deadfall. So again, keeping up with this whole Russian wilderness survival theme. So this is the Siberian deadfall. So I'm very, I'm familiar with the figure four deadfall and a few other deadfalls and a few spring snare traps. But there are a lot of different types of spring snares and deadfall, a lot of variations. So it, it, it is beneficial to kind of know a few different types. Um, and so this whole thing is just how to carve one from scratch, how to carve uh, each and every one, each and every little component of it. So it looks kind of a little bit of an intricate setup. You know, is this a little bit more work than a figure four deadfall? And as far as pocket guides go, I'm happy with this one. I think the last pocket guide we got from them was kind of lame, but this one is pretty neat. So this is the pocket field guide, how to make a Siberian deadfall. Okay, so going along with that, we also have an entire kit already made for making a Siberian deadfall. So he already has all the components, all the intricate parts carved out for you. So you only have a little bit of work to do, and then you, can, you just need to assemble it yourself. Uh, so, and you can also kind of mimic these for when you're trying to carve one yourself. This is very valuable, you know. Um, I've tried, a, tried different types of deadfalls and spring snares just from watch, looking at pictures, and it, it is tricky sometimes. So very valuable to actually have um, models like this that you can see and then reproduce yourself. So that is it, that is all the items in this month's box. Now we also have a skill challenge. Every month's box has a skill challenge to encourage you to get up and go out in the wild and actually try some stuff. So the skill challenge for this month is leaving your own gill net tutorial, all right? So like I was saying, uh, you have the video online that will demonstrate how to weave your own gill net using this uh, needle. And then you also have a little template back here. And so you can go and carve your own needle. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. You know, that is, that's super valuable, a super valuable skill to have, to be able to make your own net. Like, man, how how useful can that be? So that's it, guys. That is the December pocket box. Overall, I am happy with this pocket box. I, I'm actually very happy with this pocket box. 
We got some stuff I'm pretty excited about. I'm very excited about the gill net and the tutorial on how to make your own gill net. Um, I'm always excited about learning a new um, deadfall and new natural, uh, you know, game trap like that. Um, the needles, the needles are a good thing to have. I've already got a few sewing kits, so if you don't have one, this is something good to have. And this right here, the, uh, the hatchet, very cool. Like I said, this is probably my favorite blade that we've gotten from a pocket box so far. I'm hoping to see more stuff like this from them. Um, it's got some weight to it. It's got a real nice wood handle, real smooth. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have fun with this, man. I'm gonna have a lot of fun. So overall, yes, I'm happy with this pocket box. I give it a, uh, I give it an A. Yeah, I give this an A. Not an A plus, but I give it an A. All right, so that's it for the December 2016 pocket box. If you guys want to find out more about them, go to myapocketbox.com. They're a very unique box. You know, a lot of boxes like this, they focus just on gear and just giving you stuff. They are trying to teach you, right? Creek Stewart, the guy who runs it, um, he is a wilderness survival teacher. And he's trying to teach you through a, a, a bi-monthly subscription box, which is a real challenge. But he does that with the different um, projects like this and different skill projects and then the videos that come along with these boxes. So it's it's very unique, and like I said at the beginning of this video, it's it's like Boy Scouts for grown-ups, uh, and it gets delivered to your doorstep, I think every other month. I think it's bi-monthly. So all right, so that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. I do a lot of videos about prepping and survival. Till next time, remember, what Creek always says, it's not if, but when. 2016 Apocalypse Box, the last Apocalypse Box of 2016. Hey Survivalists, Malcolm here with Survival in December 2016 a box. Box a box? Box a box.